All right, guys. So today we're going to cover, I think, something very important. Okay, some of you have uh, some of the methods. Some of you are mentorship students. Some of you are interested in joining the program. The next class is starting on the 14th, January 14th. And if you have any any questions about it, or if you need to see what's included, it includes all of my methods and all the courses. And the focus is really only on uh, price action. There is a software like the Atlas Line software, and uh, the Trades Caliper comes with software. And so there's software that I provide with it. But ideally, I want to focus traders on uh, price action. And so, so for those of you who entered a little earlier, I was uh, showing, I was showing uh, the last class on identifying a trend, right? So I use uh, what I call the 6-6 model to identify a trend. It always keeps me out of trouble and guessing, and it's something I teach. But more importantly, we have this year, the year being 2015, that is very, very, very important. And believe it or not, there is something in the market that is 100% accurate. We have a method, or I should say a pattern, I think more importantly a pattern, that is 100% accurate. And I'm going to teach you that today. Uh, Chase, you can. You can definitely uh, force the sound through your headset. You just have to go to your volume icon. It'll look something like this, right? And you have to choose which, which you want. So that's how you would identify which speakers you want. Yes, Dave, I am. Absolutely. I'm recording it. Everyone's going to get a copy of it to review. You can email me questions if you have any. And I definitely invite you guys to go back, look at what I'm showing you. You know, practice it, you know, validate it. Uh, Sol, I don't use any moving averages. I don't use any MACD. I don't use any, I don't use anything as far as the conventional indicators that exist. Right? Yes, it is being recorded, Iman. Okay? So the goal here is to understand what you're seeing and what you're doing. ATR, right? I use the ATR, but I don't use any moving averages. Okay? And the problem for Sol, for indicators, a what's called a optimization problem. And when you try to optimize something, it's maybe today it'll work, but tomorrow it won't work. Okay, so the one thing that you're going to notice that I have added here to my chart, and for those of you that are in the mentorship program, this is probably something that you remember. I have a daily chart up here, and I know that primarily I'm a day trader, but it's good to understand and know the bigger picture, the bigger concept of what's happening. So what you're going to see here is you know, the days moving up, days moving down, moving up, moving down. So now we have to interpret this. The first thing that I want everyone to do before I get into the really juicy stuff here about what 2015 is all about, I'm going to ask everyone to add a very important tool to your charts. And if you have seen my videos, you've probably already heard me speak about the ATR, the average true range, where it dictates what the expectation is for what the market is currently doing. So that means that if I was going to take a trade long or short today or yesterday, I could expect on a daily chart 28 points. If I was going to trade on the 29th, December 29th, I could expect 14 points. If I was going to trade on December 18th, I could expect 40 points. So this is something that I go into great detail on how to use it, and I focus on the ATR as a guide to what kind of stops I should be trading and using, and the targets that I should be using as well. If anything that you take from uh, this webinar today, it would definitely be know what to expect from the type of market conditions you're seeing. So when I see here the, the market moving up, moving down, I can't trade and expect every day to be the same it has to be as detailed as possible. Under slower conditions, you're going to take a smaller stop and a smaller target. 
under more volatile conditions, when you have these big range days, the ATR is going to be larger, you're going to have a larger profit, but you also have to have a larger stop as well. Okay? And so if you haven't seen the videos out there that I have for free on using the ATR, explaining how you should do it. It doesn't matter if you're using a daily chart or five minute chart or hourly, hourly chart or stocks or forex or currencies. It works in the same exact manner. The setting that I like to use is four or five. I have it here setting of four. Most recent current conditions, the last four days, last four hours, last four minutes, tells you an incredible amount of information on what to expect into the future. Okay? Anybody have any questions on that? On an annual basis, Matt, I would say um, it depends on multiple things, right? It depends on uh, how large your account size is. It depends on the market being slow or being fast. It depends on many contracts you trade. There's a lot that goes into that. Uh, the setting cell for the ATR is 4. Next we're going to look at what, besides the current conditions, what does 2015 have to offer? 2015 is an extremely special year. Does anybody know why? What do you think? Yep. That's right, Jim. It's an unknown <laughs> it's an unknown not by a lot of people. I'm probably the only person um, bringing it out there to the forefront on why 2015 is important. Come on. Because 2015 is a year that ends in a five. And if you take a look at all of the history that exists, 2015, 2005, uh, 2000, uh, 1995, 1985, 1985, 75, 65, 55, 45, 35, all the way back to the beginning of the financial markets that we have on record, we have a higher close than open, a bullish year on every year that ends in a five, believe it or not. So when you look at what the expectation is for the year 2015, you can expect the market based on it being 100% accurate. And I'm going to show you how you should enter into the market, what you, you should be looking for, an exact method to take advantage of this. You can expect the market to close higher than open. If I have something that's 100% accurate, then I have to trust it. Okay. So let me take care of here a couple of questions here. Saul, the setting was four on the ATR. It doesn't matter which charting platform you're using. NinjaTrader uses four. TradeStation uses four comma four. Uh, Dijon says here, do you ever trade on day charts? Uh, I don't trade on day charts, uh, Dijon, exclusively. I focus on the five-minute chart, but I do look at the bigger picture. And so the bigger picture is going to be um, whether or not we have a January effect, do we have a, a year ending in a five, and it focuses me and gives me a bias on what my expectation is. It doesn't matter at that point if I if I take a short trade or a long trade, but there are specifics when looking at the bigger picture, and sometimes I do take a trade based on um, daily charts. Uh, Josh, are the videos on the ATR on YouTube? Yes, they are on YouTube, Josh. Uh, you can also visit the blog search for ATR uh, videos on my day trade to win uh, blog but they're available on YouTube a very popular video I think there's over 150,000 views on uh, the free trading videos I offer so very popular because they're informative the ATR chase is not I'm not using an ATR 40 I just want to clarify that so the ATR 40 chase you're looking at a profit target of 40 ticks I'm sorry, 40 points. We're looking at daily chart. This is points, so 40 points. So if I was to take a trade here, based on whatever, it could be, um, you know, it could be the January effect. It could be this 2015. It could be a blueprint. It could be whatever, because the market has made, on average, 40 points, 41 points actually. I can expect the market to move up or down from this price 40 points. So that is an exact price movement based on the current conditions. Chase. Okay. That's how I'm using it. Norman, the ATR is not lagging 
because the ATR here only plots after this candle closes. This ATR of 40 is based on four candles that are closing. So here is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, like this. So it's a very near uh, determination of what's happening. We're not looking at 50 days on average or 10 days on average or um, 100 days. We're just looking at the most recent activity, the last four days that have finished plotting. So I don't find it to be lagging at all. It's at, as a matter of fact, if you know what to expect here, then it makes the stop and the target and the trade management so much more healthier instead of not knowing do I know where the price is going to go? Do I know what my stop is? What can I expect? You know that this here, even if you take it off of here, it's 38 points, 36 points. You can expect 36 points movement from the closing price of this candle, up or down. So it's it's an excellent way to know where the market's going to move to. Okay, Chase, you okay with that? Norman, you okay with that? 2015, every year ending in a five has been market that was a bull market that closed in December higher than where it opened. Now when you think about with the expectation is that the market will move higher. And so you hear a lot of people talking throughout the industry and on TV that you know the collapse is coming and they've been saying the collapse is coming for the last three years. And all I've seen for the last three or four years is the market going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. So I can't use what somebody else believes or thinks or these outside influences to dictate the expectation. I could only take what is factual, what I know. And what I know is that the year ending in five will move higher. And I also know that I have something else that can prove that, which is the January effect, another free method that um, I encourage everybody to learn and watch search the blog for the January effect or YouTube videos January effect they trade to win which tells me and I'm gonna go over both today okay and how you can trade this so think about and I'm looking at the financials Alexander not the not the uh, currency pairs I'm looking at the financials Dow Jones S&P Russell Nasdaq okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on how to approach this 2015 situation. The way that you're going to approach it, and actually uh, there was a trade that I took today that incorporated the same idea and the same concept. Okay, so I'll show you. If you look at what's happening here, we have these highs that are put in place. Yes, right? And here's highs again, right? And here is highs again and here is highs again and so on and so on okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say to ourselves 100 percent accurate 2015 is a super year I'm going to try to take advantage of these long trades and the way that you're gonna do them is there's gonna be two ways that you're gonna take advantage of them the first method is going to be to enter high or to enter above the most recent highs put in place anytime throughout the year and I'm not going to place an order to go long exactly at uh, the highs but two points two and a half points above okay now the reason why I'm doing this is because if you know how most traders play stops it's evident that if you're short you're gonna have a stop here so when this market goes and breaks this high by two points a stop or stop with limit is your entry to go long okay anytime throughout the day if it happens now I'm looking at a daily chart and if the ATR on a daily chart is 28 points or 30 points or 40 points or 10 points from where I enter up 
I can expect 10, 20 points, whatever this value happens to be, that is my expectation for a target. Now, should you take maybe a um, more conservative target, maybe instead of, it says here 28 points, maybe 26 points or 27 points, just a little bit shy of it, sure. The more conservative you are, the easier the target is to make. But I wouldn't cut it in half. I would just, you know, cut it by a point or two to make sure you get it. So I'm going to take a, um, you could consider it a turtle breakout, uh, similar to that, but a little bit different because I'm going to add something to that Tobias, okay? And the turtles don't do it this way. Before you just decide to just go long on every high, you're going to make sure that there's a confirmed pullback or retracement. So for example, if you take a look at this here. The market is going down by a minimum of three or four candles. So you have to have at least three or four bars retracing or pulling back from the most recent highs. Now you can call that profit target, you can call oh, or you can you can call that um you know profit taking, you can call that um you know shaking out the the, the small traders, you can call that whatever you want to call it. I'm going to identify that as setting this up first. And then, as the market begins to turn around, I can then go long here. So it's not on every new high that's put in place, it's only after three or four bars have pulled back before you decide to jump in long breaking the, the most recent highs, okay? Now, you can't do this every year or at any time. There has to be a reason for doing that. The two reasons you can do that are, are the January effect, which I'm going to cover in a little bit, and also the 2015 super year, which we have. So let's take, for example, I'm going to go back to uh, this year, 2014, just to give you an example. I'm going to go back here to 2014, the beginning of 2014. And let's say that this year is going to be very similar to what's going to happen now in 2015. So I'm going to show you the examples of what you're looking for. Here is the high that was put in place. Here is a very clear retracement, definitely more than three or four bars. You've got to have three or four bars. It's got to be without a doubt, a pullback or a retracement. When the market breaks above that high by two points, you're jumping in long because all of the traders who are short will most likely now hit reverse or will get stopped out, which will fuel the market in the opposite direction. Okay. Well, you can adapt it, John, not just on daily charts, but on hourly charts or weekly charts or, or um, day trading, five minute hourly charts. So I'm showing you this on daily charts because you have to have first the bigger picture to know exactly where to enter. So I would have to say, look at a daily chart to set it up and then you can switch to a smaller time frame to get in your entry, okay? John? Now I look at the the next setup, right? Oh well, let me turn around here. For those of you who are asking about the ATR, let's take a look here. So this is the entry long. The ATR is saying about 17 points. Would everybody agree if you can see that 17 points there? Maybe a little small, but trust me it's saying 17 points. So I can expect 17 points from this trade long. So where does 17 points put me? Well, if I'm in, if I'm in at 1982, 17 points, I'm sorry, if I'm in at uh, 18 uh, 20. Then you're looking at, let's say, 1838, 1839. That's 17, 18 points. There's my target. So this ATR at the time of this trade provided me the expectation of where the market's going to move to. So you're done. You can trail a stop. You can get out. Uh, actually, I have a list of things that I wanted to cover today. One of the things I wanted to cover, I'm not sure if we're going to have enough time, 
but I'll have another webinar and I'll cover it, is trailing stops. There's a, a specific way that I like to trail stops. So if I don't get to the trailing stops today, then we'll do another webinar next week and I'll, you guys can ask me more questions and we can see what, what's going on and I'll teach you more stuff. So this is the expectation. If you want to trail a stop after that, fine, fantastic. Now, in order for me to go long again, if this is going to be kind of the equivalent of uh, 2015 or January effect. And again, I have to see one, two, three, four, five bars pulling back when the market breaks it by two points. You see here, this is a double top. It matched it. It didn't break it. So I want to definitely go with the break. So I'm long. Safety R is telling me, again, about 18 points. So let's take a look. This is 18.56. If I add uh, 20 points to 1856 or 18 points or 16 points, I'm going to get this exact value of the ATR from here to here. Not too shabby, right? Then when I look at taking another trade, long that is, this is only because we're referencing this as a January effect or as a um, 2015 super year, you have to make sure that there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Just reference that the market is retracing and pulling back. Here's the highs. Only when it breaks it, you go long again. Okay. So far, so good. That's one of the methods that you could take advantage of. Now this here is only, let's say, one, two, three. It's only three bars. I wouldn't really refer to this equivalent to a pullback or retracement when you compare it to this. right? It's kind of light on it, but if you want to consider it, you could because it still worked. But you have to be very clear that the market is shaking the trees, shaking the little little guys out. I'll go over that, uh, Alexander. Okay, I'll cover that as well. Uh, Freda, the uh, the ATR setting works on any time frame and on any market. Absolutely, it is a price based tool. So 100% on that, uh, Freda Dennis. Okay. If you want, Dijon, you can be long for a few days, or you can be long just for that day that it breaks. Good question, uh, Dijon. Absolutely. So you can look at it um, as just a day trade, where you're just going to hold it for that one day that breaks out, which will be a very strong day. Or you could hold on to it for multiple days. It's up to you. If you want to take the full ATR in a daily chart, then obviously you have to hold it for multiple days. Okay. Mon says here, so in an uptrend, are you only looking for higher highs? Yes, it's not, it's not um, Iman, that we've identified a trend so much is that we have the type of year that it is validates it. So if there's another way that you want to identify a trend, then I would agree with you with that, with that comment. But I'm only doing this because it's either a January effect or it's a super year 2015. That's my reasoning. Not so much that there's you know two moving averages have crossed and then I can identify a, a trend that way so that's not what I'm doing it's definitely a leading indicator so now as I go forward here in time here I, I notice the same thing occurring here here right okay so that's one way that you can take advantage of it there's a better way I think and maybe something that you may be more um, interested in, which is, again, the reason why I'm doing this is only because it's a January effect that was put in place or a 2015 uh, super year. And this is actually a trade that I showed uh, the traders that are currently in the mentorship program that happened to set up, you know, as, you know, as in class, right? So I wanted to show it to them. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think everybody would say that that's a pullback, right? At least three or four bars. 
you have five or six. Alright, so now when I look at going long, I mentioned to you, wait until it goes all the way back up, plus two points, to jump in. There's going to be stops up there and people who are short. They're all going to hit reverse. They're all going to get stopped out. It's going to fuel the market. It's great. But what if you entered earlier when you look at the market beginning to turn around and head back up? One of the things that I always mention this, uh, Dijon probably you know this, there's a, uh, something that I say and I probably say it too much. The markets love to test where they have recently been. They're comfortable in going in areas where they've just traded. I think when the market goes into unknown territory, then it's almost like, okay, is it going to continue? I don't know. Is it you know, it's going to reverse at any moment? And then you can use the ATR to dictate where it's going when you go into uncharted territory. But if you try to go long into an area that the market's testing where it's been, the percent accuracy improves dramatically. So would you rather take a trade into uncharted waters, into the unknown, or would you rather take a trade where it's testing where it's previously been, which I think makes more sense? When I look at the highest high and the, where this market stopped before it started to head back up, I calculate the exact midpoint or 50% mark of where there's a determining factor where it's going to run up and test where it's been. Now, you can't do this on any time. It has to be because we either have validated it as the year, as a January effect, or and for those of you don't, that don't know the January effect, I have a few videos on that going back 2013, 2014, 2012, 2011. All those years I've spoken about it before it happened, so it's validated in that sense. And I'm going long here as it comes up and tests the highs that were put in place. So when I think about going long, you're not going to go long here or here or here or here, but go long just not exactly at the 50% mark, but a few points above and take it up. That ATR is still your target. It doesn't change at all. It's still your target. You want 40 points, you're going to get 40 points out of it. This is 20, uh, let's see here, 2024. Market's at 2079. So, how can you know exactly where to enter? Well, I just put a squiggly line here, a, uh, a line here, kind of eyeball it, but you can actually get an exact price. I'm going to use a tool that most of you are familiar with, but I'm not going to use it in the same way that everybody else uses. I'm using the retracement just to use a 50% mark which is an exact high and the exact low to tell me what I need to see before I decide to go long. And so here's my entry long and there's my exit. The tool is a Fibonacci retracement without any of the Fibonacci values which is kind of funny. The only, and I'll show you how to set this up. I do this for everyone. I'm only using the 0, the 100, and the 50. That's it. You right click here in this area, Manage Templates, save it as a default. I don't worry about any 76, 61, 38, and you can copy my settings if you wish, and that's what you have. Let's take a look at this here. Market makes a new high here. 
and as I want to confirm first, we have the market pulling back and retracing. Now, I see that it has moved more than three or four bars in the opposite direction. I'm going to place this 50% mark to tell me where I need to go long. So I'm going to actually make this nice and big so everybody could see. So if the market turns around here, I'm going long at, this is 2049, I'm going long 2051. It went lower. At 2036, 2037, I'm going along at 2039. I'm going along at 2039. I'm long. And so I told a lot of people about this trade that were in the, the training rooms that I have. And I said, before it happened, this is going to happen. You guys can take it or not take it. You can hold it for one day. Dijon, I know you're a day trader. And so you can hold it just for that one day. You can validate it with the Atlas line, right? I'll show you the Atlas line if you want. And here is the result of going long. And here we are. The ATR is at 28 points. So do you know what the expectation is on this trade? 28 points. Really simple. Can I expect 100 points? No, I can expect 28 points. So 28 points would give me 20, uh, 30, 20, 38, 20, 48 is 20 points, 20, 58 is exactly what the market did in one day. And this told me the expectation. I know there's a lot of questions here. I'm trying to get to everybody. Dijon, you have the Atlas line. Right? This is what you saw today on the Atlas line because that's what you should have gotten. Atlas line. Right? Long. All right. Let me see any questions I missed here. Well, Freda, good question. Is this uh, strategy only good for super years? Uh, well, it's definitely good for the every year ending in a five, where you're only looking for longs because 100% of every year ending in a five, the market rallied. So primarily, I would say yes. But you can also use it on the January effect, which I'm going to cover next. All right, you got it. Um, let me see here. One of the questions may be important for you guys. The entry was whatever it happened to be on the daily chart, that's the entry on the, on an intraday, on a five-minute chart. Okay, The price doesn't change, Nadejan. The entry is the entry. Whether you look at it and enter it on a daily chart or a five-minute chart, it's the same price. You're just entering long. You're just looking at a different chart for entering long. Works the same on pips. Yep, Alexander. Yes, I will be. So. Before I go any further, I want to make sure, before I get into something new and something different, I want to make sure that you guys understand the rationale behind going long 2015, the importance of it, let me go back to this, and how you can take advantage of it. The two ways that I'm recommending are going to be when it breaks by two points, you're in you have to have a retracement first of three or four days to validate it. Or the same thing, just wait until the market stops here. I'll do this here. Wait until the market stops its downward drop. And I remember the news, right? Everybody lives in the now, and I just heard all throughout the news on the TV, Oh, this is it. The market's going to drop. The market's going to crash. This is it, right? When you see a, a day like this and a day like that and a day like that, right? It's all you hear. Everybody starts selling. And you can't really think of it that way. You have to think of it instead. This is just a pulling back. And when and if it turns around, I'm going long. So let's take a look. You have here market going down. 
you have here the market going down. You have here the market going down, and now you're long. Same thing with this. you got to wait until it retraces. Gregory says, how much uh, do you need in an account? Well, you have to hold the trade overnight, right, if you're holding it for multiple days. So a trade like this, I would say less than, or I would say right about two or $3,000 to hold it overnight for an E-mini S&P. Uh, day trading margins are usually $500 to 1000 uh, but you have to definitely have more to hold it overnight. So talk to your broker, Gregory, see what his opinion is on holding it overnight. Yeah, you can spread bet it but I'm not a big fan of spread betting. <laughs> yes, Sam, it'll be available tomorrow. Okay, so that's what you can expect. And believe me, I can show you this year after year after year with excellent results. Excellent. So same thing here. And you're long. And the same thing here and you're long. Right? And you're long. Now, I have to say that when you see this break either two points above the midpoint, the 50% mark, or two points above uh, the highest high, what you really want to see is an extreme push it's the only way I can explain it. You don't want to see this have three or four days of kind of clueless and confused action. In every one of these examples, the result is it hits that mark and it says it's almost as if everybody just jumps in. Okay? So if you ever take this trade either at the 50% mark or at the highest high, you want to see an immediate pop. You don't want to see it lag, lag or flip-flop. And if it starts to be day after day, you see four or five days of just whipsawing and it's, you know, um, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes, you want to, you want to cut it loose. Okay. You want to see an immediate pop. I'm only using 50%. I'm not using any other value, just 50%, because that is what's been tested, and that's what works. Okay? So that's what I have tested all the way back to before 1900 on every year ending in a 5 and on every year that has a January effect. Let's switch gears here a little bit. Let's go with the January effect. And the January effect is based off of uh, every year, how do you prepare for the year? How I prepare every year and how a lot of money managers prepare every year and how I would say the smart money, funds, banks, they've been doing this for as long as I can remember. They look at what happens in January. And if January has a higher close than open. So for example, let me just remove some things here off the chart. Let's say that this is January 3rd or 2nd when we had the first trading day of the year and the market opened for the year here at 2062. And as soon as the year opened, it's as if you just have selling, right? So, you know, everybody thought, let's go short, right? This is the dump. But wait a second. Let's catch our legs here a little bit and see where this is going. Before I decide to go long or short, long term for the year as a bias, the January effect can forecast what you can expect. And if this month, January, closes higher, on January 31st, anywhere above 2062, uh, what is it, 2061, if it closes one point above 2061, you have a January effect in place. And the year, when you look at it, December 31st will close higher. It's not 100% like the super year, 
but it's about 90% accurate. So if you're asking yourself, what kind of year are we expecting? Let's wait. And I'll do another webinar when January 31st comes along to kind of review this and let's see where we're going with this. And the goal is to take long trades the same way that I just showed you on the super year, either a 50% retracement to get long testing the highs or um, breaking out of the highs by two points. Now let me go back here in history because the question I get a lot is, let me just go back here and show you 2014, the year that just finished, January. And I may have to add more data, so hold on a second here. So let me go back to January 2014 and let's review it. So January 1st, 2014 had a, let me see here, December, January, right? Right there. So January 1st to January 31st looks like this. So let me just change this color here. Maybe it's a little bit harder to see. Okay, so what do you think? Was there a January effect 2014 that the market closed higher or lower in January? Lower. Lower. So you don't have a January effect. You don't have the bias to the long side. Even though the year was 2014, it uh, was up the entire year, January didn't forecast it. So you can't think the market's going to go down. You can't think the market's going to go up. You can't think anything because there's not a January effect in place. Okay, so it doesn't work the same way. Glenn, email me. I'll, um, the six month Atlas line is software. It's the Atlas line software for six month license. But email me, Glenn, and I'll, I can review it with you since you have the ATO, the ATO open already. In the beginning of January 2014, I can't expect to buy it and buy it and buy it because I don't have proof. So let me go back to 2013. So in 2013, we have this. So would you consider this a January effect? It only works to the long side, okay guys? So if the, if the price is lower, it's not the opposite. I want to make sure you guys are clear on it. It doesn't work in the opposite way. It's about 50-50 that the market go up or down when January closes lower. These are statistics that we've tested. It's only when the market closes higher that it's 90% accurate that we're going to have a higher close and open, a higher close in, in December, end of the year, okay? So in this case, the market went up. So what is this forecast, or what is the bias, or what can I expect? I can expect the market to move higher and higher and higher throughout the year. But I'm not just going to buy it. I'm going to wait until I see a retracement, three, four bars. Here you have one, two, three, four, five. Look what happened here, and look what happened if you got in a little bit earlier, like this. They both worked. Whether you took this or you took this. 20 points, market moved like more like 100. But all I wanted was 20 based off of the ATR, right? My expectation. Okay. So I look at this. Would everybody agree that this is a retracement or pullback by a minimum of three or four bars, clear as day? If the answer is yes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going long, 15, 18, let's say, or I'm going long, or, or an and, I should say, two points above that. You're long, you're long. Markets love to test where they have previously traded. Very common. I want you guys to remember that. 
You don't need any moving averages to tell you this, or MACDs, or Bollinger Bands. And you don't need anything. You just need to interpret what you're seeing, or any complicated order flow. I don't do any of that stuff. I just focus you on simplicity. Great question. So what's the stop? What can I expect? What's the risk? Well, you remember earlier, Henry, that I recommended that an immediate move to the upside should occur. If you have this day giving you the pop, it's probably likely that it's just going to keep on running. But if you see this starting to flip-flop, right, dojis and, you know, maybe a red candle or two, you have to question whether or not it's ready to turn around. So the stop, at minimum, should be no less than 1 times the ATR. So your stop on a trade like this can't be 2 points or 3 points. If the ATR is telling me here 20 points, my stop has to be no less than 20 points. And the reason is because I know that the market could move 20 points up or down. So really, what's the point in having a tight stop where I can get stopped out prematurely by the randomness of the market moving up or down? This is the range that it's showing me that the market can make. I can't have a stop smaller than that. Uh, that's for Henry, who asked about the stops. Well, Josh, when this candle opens, this day opens, right? Great question, Josh, right? When this candle opens here for the day, I'm going to forward that to everybody. This 20 point ATR has not yet plotted because what it's taking into the equation is the last four completed bars. You agree with that, Josh? So it's only referencing that. So if I take a look at that, it's the same. It doesn't vary that much maybe off by a point or so, but you're not looking at a difference of 10 points or 5 points. This is 20 and a half, and this is 20. So it's half a point difference from day to day. That's why the ATR is important to understand, because at any point in the chart, I have an expectation. Now, as the market moves into the future, this candle closes. This is now taking into the equation these four bars. I can then adjust my target from being 20, exactly 20 and a half as a target, dropping it down to two ticks by 20 points. Does that make sense, Josh? You okay with that? Now, as you go forward into the future, it's no longer going to take these four. It's going to update it to this, and so on and so on. That's how it works. Okay, so Dijon says, what can we do for tomorrow uh, with this info for five minutes? Well, th there's a couple of things you can do. First is, sorry to say, but today was the entry. So you kind of lost out a little bit on, on, the, uh, on the timing. But look at the blueprint, the power price action trade that you have as well as the atlas line. If it starts telling you longs, so I'm going to go here into the, well, I'll get into that in a, in a moment, Dijon. But uh, what can you do with this tomorrow? Well, you can validate that the long is still continuing because remember, markets love to test where they've been. Look at the current most recent highs that were put in place. The market will run to that and it will surpass it. I don't like to make guarantees and say this is going to happen, but I truly believe it's going to happen. Now, you have to find at least three or four bars that are clearly clearly pulling back. To me, that's a pullback. You know what that tells me? It tells me that I'm going long or I'm going long when it surpasses it. So in this case, it never closed back above. It got me long here. Remember what I said. If it starts to flip-flop, and it doesn't continue higher because every successful trade makes a run right to there. You're going to get out. 
it's a time-based stop. That's what I call it. Teach that as well. Okay, next. The market continued lower yet, so I have to adjust. I'm still looking for this to go long, and I'm still looking for the 50% from wherever it pauses and stops. I'm long here. Do you see how the market immediately ran up there? Every single day was an up day. There's a, a difference when you see this, when you compare that to that. So I want you guys to understand understand that, okay? Okay. And I go forward here in time again. Nothing changes. Looking for a retracement. This is not a retracement. This is a range. This is a retracement or a pullback. So I started off. I'm going long when it breaks the 50% mark. Did this give us an entry here to the long side? No. So there's no entry. I adjust again as it continues lower. I'm long. Do you know what you see here? You don't see flip-flop or chop-chop. You see the run. That's what you got to have. Okay, so let me see a couple of questions here. Um, Alexander, ATR method works for news. Yes. The answer is yes, Ale uh, Alexander. It does work for news. Next question is, um, Dijon, does the Atlas line read daily info? No, it doesn't. But you asked me, Dijon, about using um, during the day, right, intraday charts. So you put in the five-minute Atlas line. If you start getting long entries, you know that this is continuing right to the long side. So no, the Atlas line is only for, um, for intraday, right? Uh, Josh, uh, yes, he said this. Okay, uh, Sam, is this going to work on a daily or any time frame? Well, Sam, to set this up, you, I, I'm, gonna, I'm showing you here daily charts because it's a lot clearer, or else if you use hourly charts, you have to have a whole lot of data. So I recommend the best way to do this, Sam, is to use a daily chart, get, because I'm using daily charts for the lowest low and the highest high, get the value that you want, and then switch over to a uh, intraday waiting for that entry to happen during the day. So you don't have to have this daily chart up you know, constantly or multiple charts. A situation that I saw a long time ago, and you guys aren't doing this or still doing this, this top-down approach of using monthly chart, weekly chart, daily chart, 60-minute chart, 30-minute chart, 15-minute chart, 5-minute, 1-minute, and then when the full moon comes out, that's the trade. There's just too much information and too much interpretation looking at all that chart and all those data. Just the other day, somebody contacted me and uh, sent me a picture of a chart that had like 10 million things on the chart. I asked him, I said, do you understand what, what's going on here? And he said, I have no idea. So that's the reason why I want to focus on just setting it up. And then if you want to look at an, a day trade during the day, validate it. Does it have to close above the level? No, it does not have to close above the level. It just has to go to that price, two points above this price in your long. There's no, I'm not waiting for the day to close. Uh, Freda. Uh, does not work in bear markets, Joan. Good question. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's a different characteristic. You got it, Sam. You're welcome. Okay. I know you guys have more questions. I see a lot of questions here that um, are still coming through. Gregory and um, Dijon and everybody else. Email me. I get a lot of email. But I answer all these trading-related questions myself. Email me and I'll, I'll get back to you with exact entries and answers to your questions, okay? For those of you who are asking about joining the upcoming mentorship program, it's January 14th. It's all inclusive. I have here a couple of mentorship students in the room. You guys are free to say what you think about the program, what you learned, valuable, the value that it has, the support that we offer as well. We're very big on the support. And by the way, we also offer Ninja Trader for free with live data, which I think is a benefit. So you can 
always get live data. You don't have to run and get a broker and you don't need to do that right away. We can provide all that to you for free. Yes, Freda, the, the super year strategy can be traded all year long. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. And not only that, Freda, the January effect, which 2013 was a January effect. And go back. I want you guys to go back and validate everything that I'm saying. 2013, 2012, 2011. They were all January effects. January dictated what the year was going to turn out to be. So here is 2000 and let me see if I have 2012 here. And let me see here if I can add here more days I'm not sure if it goes back this far no it does okay so 2012 and okay so if memory serves me because I have blog posts and I have videos from 2012 and 11 discussing this here is January I'm sorry, uh, this is January. So do you know what that told me in a lot of smart money? Buy it, buy it and hold it, buy it every time it pulls back, buy it, buy the December contract in the, into the future and hold on to it. I don't expect anybody to do that, but roll it over in June, roll it over in September, roll it over in December. You can do all those things, right? And I cover all that stuff in um, in the program. But this January effect told me buy it the entire year. And that's what happened. The entire year of 2011, 2012, 2013. Um, let's take a look here. The financials, uh, Luciana. So for Luciana, if you look at NASDAQ, Dow, E-mini, Russell, that's what it works in. You got it, Dijon. Email me if you have any follow-up questions, okay, as well, all right? Is the ATR on Ninja the same as the average true range indicator on Thinkorswim? Uh, Freda, I don't have Thinkorswim, but I'm assuming if it's called the average true range indicator it's the same indicator across all platforms TradeStation, thinkorswim open ecry multi charts so the atr as far as the, that name calculates the same thing the only thing you have to watch is that i, I know that TradeStation uses two settings and they're both four like four comma four i'm not sure if thinkorswim uses that same two parameter plot okay but it's if it's called the average true range i would assume it's the same on thinkorswim or fred you got it, Joan. Have a good night as well, okay? You got it, uh, Justin. I'll send this video out to the blog and to YouTube. You guys are free to review it. I look forward to talking to you and teaching you guys something new. I'll see if I can have another webinar next week, maybe teach you something different. And I'll be posting updates throughout the year as well. Okay, guys, take care. Hey, J Sean, thank you for that. I appreciate that. You got it, Sean. Bye-bye now. Stay safe. Bye-bye.